time. So good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining our webinar today. Um, this is a webinar um, specific, specifically for the HE sector. And the aim of this webinar is to support you in your use of the project reporting tool by taking you through some of the frequently raised queries and questions that have been received um, into um, the Capita team. This session will be recorded um, and we do aim to share this recording on our YouTube channel for those that are unable to join us today or, or if you wish to refer back to it later on. The uh, chat function is muted, but the Q&A function is open. Um, questions will be moderated uh, to avoid duplication, essentially. Um, and we will be looking to send a summary out to attendees after the call for any that we may not have time to cover uh, during the call. Um, as communicated in the invite, uh, we're not able to explore individual cases during this webinar due to the time that we have available, but we will be sharing details on how you can contact us uh, later on in the webinar uh, if you need to. Um, so, Chris? So just some introductions then from myself and the presenters today. So my name is Delaney Dunkley. I'm the Head of Service uh, Delivery for the Turing Scheme here at Capita. And I'll hand over to Emma Sullivan. Who is the Senior Consultant for Grants and Management for the Turing Delivery Service. And hello everyone, my name is Chris Lazo. I'm a Business Analyst in the Digital Solutions Team at Capita Public Service. Uh, and I'll be leading uh, the walkthroughs uh, today, um, looking at the common queries. Thanks, Chris. So today's um, agenda. Then um, move on from moving on from the introduction. Emma will be taking you briefly through the payment cycle, um, just to confirm understanding. Um, uh, just to maybe provide some clarification around the payment cycle for the Turing scheme. Um, Chris will then take you through um, the project reporting tool itself and those frequently raised queries and questions to support. And then Emma would be back with um, some um, pointers on how you can uh, get in touch with us if you need to and the um, sorry, and the email addresses that you should be using to do that. So I'll hand over to you, Emma, if that's all right. Yeah, of course. Um, so the payment cycle, this is uh, the, the be all and end all really of, of what we've been doing here. And um, it's just to clarify the timelines on how to do the payment cycle and when should you make your payment request. Um, on the left hand side there, you've got the, uh, this is from the handbook. So you've got your points of expenditure and the deadline for submission. So, for example, if your mobility starts on the 1st of May and you've put in your application that your point of expenditure is one month prior to that, you would need to be submitting your payment claim in February. And again, if, for example, uh, your payment, your mobility start date was the 1st of uh, August and you had put a three month point of expenditure, prior to the start date, that claim would need to be submitted by the 15th of March. So the best time to submit your payment request is just before the deadline of the 15th. If you miss the deadline, it does mean that that claim won't be put through until the next deadline. So it's important to, to hit that deadline. When you submit your claim, Capita then have to request those funds from DFE, which we will then receive about 30 to 40 days after that after which we'll be able to release those funds to yourselves. This is why it's really important to understand in those lead in times and how your point of expenditure affects the timing of your claim. And we're going to go on now to uh, Chris, who's going to go through kind of like the elements of making payments, etc. Thank you. Um, so just wanted to mention our YouTube channel. Um, so there are three uh, video walkthroughs uh, up on our YouTube channel um, where I um, where I walk through the end to end process for how to do change requests, um, participant uploads and payment requests. Um, and on those I cover different tips uh, how to um, how to um, 
yeah, sort of uh, use, using the spreadsheets and uh, uh, the same sort of common queries that we're going to look at today, but um, just in a bit more detail. Um, and also on 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 this call, because we're sort of limited to an hour, I won't be doing those end to end sort of um, yeah, how to uh, you know starting off a change request, starting off a payment request. We'll we'll just be focusing on on the common queries relating to those. Um, so if you haven't yet seen those videos, then um, please do take a look. Um, they they have been uh, useful for for quite a few people that that I've spoken with. Um, so that's youtube.com forward slash churn scheme UK. Um, so although we will be dump, jumping in the deep end uh, in terms of uh, sort of the common queries, so if, if you're at a stage where um, you, maybe you haven't done a change request or, or payment request um, yet, I just want to sort of give you a brief in, in terms of uh, what, what those are, um, but most of you will probably already um, know this, but um, just, just to take a minute to explain. So uh, a change request is a request that uh, to make changes to your project within your approved budget. So this includes changes to your mobility groups and updates to your participants list. Um, an important point to note with change requests if, is that if the change to your mobility groups is, is minor and we have certain tolerances um, that sort of trigger if it goes um, outside of that, um, but if, it, if it's sort of a minor change or there's no changes to your mobility groups and it's only an update to your participants list, this will be automatically approved by the portal. Um, so you'll receive an email within about 15 minutes once it's been processed um, saying that it's, it's been approved. Um, and that just means it's sort of been uh, accepted into the system. Um, and what we'll look at in a minute um, it is that the, the system hasn't checked that everything is complete at that stage. It's just sort of you provided your update. They could be incomplete, um, but for, for payment, they need to be fully completed. And again, we'll take a look at that um, in a moment. But um, yeah, any bigger changes to mobility groups? Um, yeah, if you yeah, if you change making bigger changes to those, they will go through to uh, manual approval. Um, so yeah, the change request process is all about making sure everything's up to date um, and, and reflects the mobility groups and the participants that are actually going uh, on these uh, mobilities. Um, and then the payment request, of course, is then now that that, that is up to date um, to request a payment against those that information that provided. Um, so those those participants uh, uh, now that you've uh, provided all the details uh, for those they can be requested and that's the payment is requested against the point of expenditure month so not the start month of mobilities but the point of expenditure month um, and again we'll go into that in a bit more detail uh, or otherwise um, an organizational support uh, request um, so before we start is, is there anything to delay Emma um, to anything uh, to discuss before I move on. So we've got a question here. If we can just pause um, from Francis, if claimant, sorry, if payment claims are not submitted on time, can they still be submitted late? Emma? Um, so they can be submitted late. However, they will then go through into the next payment deadline. So it, it's best to hold off submitting late um and submitting the next time and including everything in that payment request instead so uh, hold off submitting rather than submitting late thanks emma um we do have a question in from um laura but i think we'll need to come back it's it's quite a long one at the moment so it, it's around mobility um, mobility durations. So I think we'll answer that one um, outside of this, Laura, if that's okay, and answer that individually, um, allowing you to continue if that's okay, Chris. Thank you. Um, and just to reiterate for anyone struggling to find that Q&A uh, function, so um, at the top of uh, Teams, um, it might be hidden under the more button, um, but uh, there should be a Q&A button uh, that you can click on uh, to see uh, the questions and you can uh, think and give other people thumbs up um, to sort of upvote them. Um, but yeah, any questions, um, please put them on there and we'll try and 
uh, cover um, as many as we can uh, as we go through this. Um, but as mentioned, um, any individual circumstances uh, we need to take away uh, and we'll handle that um, outside of the call. Um, so I'll start with um, sort of frequently raised queries around change requests and participant uploads. Um, so the first thing I want to look at is uh, removing participants from mobility groups. Um, so you may uh, have come across a message when uploading participants that says um, you may select the same number of participants, uh, sorry, you must select the same number of participants to remove that you have requested. Um, so why does this message show? So this message shows um, when the participant numbers have been reduced from a mobility group um, and you have not selected which participants in the spreadsheet to remove. Um, and I'll, I'll bring up, a, 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 as we're going through these, uh, uh, some of them I'll bring up as a, in a live demonstration just to show you. Um, so we'll switch over to that in a second. But how do you fix this? So we've actually updated the guidance this week. And so we've made uh, an update to the portal so that this um, error uh, is, is now updated to advise you which mobility groups don't match up. Um, so you can see on the right hand side there, um, it now advises um, you need to remove participants to match the total number of mobility groups by selecting yes in the remove participants column. Um, and below that, it advises the mobility groups that don't match up. So we can see skills competition in France. There's 13 learner participants are in the mobility group, but you have 15 in the spreadsheet. So that means in the spreadsheet, um, you need to use the remove participants column to select two for removal um, so that the numbers match up. Um, and I'll just switch over uh, to the spreadsheet to demonstrate that. So here's my participant spreadsheet uh, that I've downloaded as part of a uh, change request form. And when you scroll to the far right, um, there's this remove participant column. Um, it explains up here to only use this when you're uh, reducing the number of participants from your mobility groups. Um, so in this case, if I had uh, if I had reduced the number for this, uh, say, uh, skills competition in France, um, I would because the portal needs to know, you know which which two to remove um, it wouldn't want to we wouldn't want to remove those at random so that's why um, this process is necessary to then select a yes against two of them for example um, and then when you upload the spreadsheet into the portal um, that error will no longer occur you'll be able to upload it Um, some tips for copy and pasting information into the participant list spreadsheet. Um, so obviously with um, now depending on the size of your organization and um, how many mobility groups you've got going on, um, you, you may need to copy and paste. Um, if, if you've got a smaller number, um, maybe you've manually entered them, but um, I appreciate that um, there may be cases where you need to copy and paste those across um, and that can cause um, some sort of formatting issues when you do that. And so there's a few tips here to avoid um, sort of breaking the spreadsheet, if you like, um, to yeah, so that it's sort of formatted correctly and, and the correct information uh, is in there uh, for when you upload it. So tip number one is when copy and pasting information from another source, um, select a paste of values only so that you don't change the formatting of the spreadsheet. Um, and that's the button you can see on the right hand side circled in in red um, and that will just avoid bringing across formatting from another spreadsheet because um, in this spreadsheet for example if you're copy and pasting dates um, you might um, copy and paste something that's maybe not a valid date um, into the spreadsheet um, and so if you just do values only that can uh, avoid those problems um, of course, just double check all the information is correct before copying and pasting um, into the spreadsheet. 
um, and for columns relating to dates, emails or costs, um, where possible, um, consider manually typing those uh, if you can, um, as that will, there's, there's validation built into the spreadsheet um, when, you, when, when you type them in. Um, and for uh, dates, for example, um, when you type them in and press enter, it will make sure that the date is in the valid uh, range. Um, whereas if you copy and paste from another spreadsheet or wherever else, into the spreadsheet um, it ignores that validation so when you go to upload if you have put um, you know a, a mobility start date of 20 2025 which isn't a valid date uh, for this for this year's scheme um, it's going to give you an error in that case um, whereas if you'd manually typed it or um, if you just and the next tip is is then if you double click into the cells or or you press F2 on your keyboard, hit enter, that will run through the validation of each one. So you could you can just quickly what, what I do sometimes to check is press F2 and then enter and repeat those two buttons and it will run the validations that you copy and pasted um, and just make sure each one um, is valid essentially um, where there is validation built into the spreadsheet um, which is on dates um, uh, dates and costs Chris could I just um, bring some questions in there yes, please. thank you um, so we have um, is it possible to allow sort and search uh, sort and search function on the change request spreadsheet? Uh, unfortunately not. Um, so the it, it, um, a, as you know, the spreadsheet is quite locked down and, and the reason for that is is that we need to receive the um, information um, in the the order um, that it's it's downloaded in and in the in the same formats that are set up on the spreadsheet. Um, so, it, it's something we're uh, looking at in future, but um, it, uh, if if the spreadsheet could be um, sort of you know uh, filtered, sorted, um, it it would then when you upload that spreadsheet, it, it would return an error because it, it it's not in the same order um, or, or the same uh, yeah. The, um, if, if you were to filter, for example, and hide away some of the fields, so it, it can cause a lot of problems technically. And uh, but I, I do appreciate that um, you know that uh, that is something that would be very helpful um, for when you're creating this, uh, you know, adding all these participant information. Um, so it's it's something we're looking at, um, but it it is very technically complex um, to to be able to do that. And as a um, to, to work around that, we've provided the participant uh, reference file, um, and that's the file you can download from the application overview. Um, and you can sort and filter all of your data in that spreadsheet, um, but it can't be used for uploading. Um, so. Uh, just have a couple more, Chris, if that's all right. Uh, when removing a participant and selecting yes, should I also delete the participant's data from the Excel file? Um, it doesn't matter, essentially. Um, if you select a yes and upload it, that per, that row is going to be deleted. So whether or not you've got data in there or not, um, it will be removed. So, yeah. Any other questions? Uh, just going through if you'd like to continue for now and then if it's all right, I'll interrupt you just shortly. Sure, no worries. Thank you. Um, so looking at email addresses. Um, so if you enter an invalid email address, uh, you may receive uh, a message um, saying one or more emails are in the incorrect format. Uh, correct these inputs um, in the participant list and re-upload the file. So this error shows, um, so the, the portal um, has has checked the file and found that one of one or more of the email addresses are invalid. Um, so they're not um, we just do some basic checks um, on the email addresses to make sure that they follow an email address format. Um, and if it doesn't, um, uh, and, th and that's sort of, uh, you know, as as part of the program, we need to provide um, 
uh, correct email addresses for the participants um, that are going on these trips. Um, and so we that's the reason why we uh, run those uh, checks on the email addresses. So how do you fix it? Um, so of course, the first check, if, if you were to get that error, would be to just have, have a look, close look through the list um, and see if you can spot any errors. Uh, if that if you still can't find it, um, some tips uh, is you could highlight the all the email addresses and press Control F on your keyboard to do a, a find and search. Um, and you can search for accidental characters and common ones um, that, that I've seen are spaces um, and particularly spaces in the middle of an email address. Um, so if, if, for example, you had Chris and then a space at gmail.com, that's not a valid um, email address because you can't have spaces in there. Um, now we do ignore spaces um, at the start and end of an email address. So if you've accidentally put a space uh, there, we'll ignore that. Um, but any other characters in the middle of an email address that make it uh, invalid, that's spaces or commas, um, it will return um, this, this message. Um, and I'll do a quick demonstration of that. Um, so let me just switch over to my spreadsheet. So I go to the email address column. Um, so if I had, if I accidentally had a space in there like that, um, now this is a small number of email addresses, but if you have hundreds, it can obviously be a bit difficult to uh, find that in a, in a long list. So what you can do is just highlight uh, all the email addresses in this column, do a control F uh, to find, and I could just uh, press space and find all, and it will tell me that there's a space in cell W11, which you can then find there and uh, correct, the, correct the issue. Um, other ones I've seen uh, is, is accidental commas. Um, so again, you could search for those. Um, but that's why the error shows is because it's an invalid email address. So a um, few tips there to find where you might have may have mistyped an email address. Um, but if you still not able to find it, um, do get in, in touch with us um, and we've got um, our support team can sort of help you uh, help you find where that issue may be. Um, question, Chris, uh, should we remove participants on the spreadsheet as a change request rather than making the change as a payment request? So I think that refers to as part of a payment request. Um, to remove participants, yes, needs to be done as part of the change request process. Um, so if you're if the number of participants uh, are changing from mobility group so say you've got 20 going in the mobility group um now one person isn't going um so you'd need to um yeah start the change request process change the number of participants to 19 um then download the spreadsheet and mark one of those rows for that mobility group um for removal so select yes um upload the spreadsheet um, and then that change uh, will be will be processed. Thank you. So we have um, how is the participant list sorted? Can it be sorted by mobility group start month date and or mobility type, i.e. study or traineeship for ease of locating mobility groups when we have a larger number of participant references in the overall list? Um, so at the moment, the participant list is ordered by um, the the order that they were the mobility groups were input into the system. Um, we uh, so unfortunately the ordering can't be changed. Um, a a tip to um, if you're struggling, if you've got a lot of mobility groups, um, and you sort of struggling to find where each one may be. Um, you can name your mobility groups after the, the start month. So as you can see, I've done here, I've got skills competition in France, April 2023, traineeship to Germany, May 2023, etc. Um, so that's a workaround. Um, 
for for next year's um, Turing scheme, uh, we will have additional columns in here. We'll have the um, the start month and the point of expenditure month, uh, and it will be ordered um, by those dates. Um, but unfortunately, as we're part way through the scheme at the moment, um, adding uh, adding additional columns to the spreadsheet um, at the moment would sort of uh, invalidate um, all change requests that are currently in progress um, because it, it means a, a change to to the data. Um, so as a as a workaround for for that, um, you can add the dates uh, into the mobility group name. Um, and you could submit a change if you submit the change request with just that change to the mobility group name. Um, there's essentially no no changes other than the name, so that will be automatically approved by the system. OK, uh, and this a uh, clarification one here in, um, in the last question, Chris, and I'll now let you um, carry on with what you're going on there. In the last question, does remove participants by a change request mean one? remove the name and details of the participant, e.g. the part participant as a person, or two, a participant as a place in a mobility group? Um, say those two options again for me. So is it one, remove the name and details of the participant, e.g. the participant as a person, or two, a participant as a place in a mobility group? Um, it's removing the the, the place, I, I would say. Um, so let me think how to explain this. So yeah, it, it will. So you can only use this column on, on the far right hand side if you've reduced the number of participants. So you can't go in here and say, OK, um, you know, if, if you haven't changed the mobility group prior to this, um, you can't you can't just uh, say, OK, I want to remove these without first making the change to the to the mobility group. Um, so that that step is vital for this. Um, so if I had reduced the number of participants from you know, 20 to 17, now I can go in here and say, OK, these three participants um, are removed. So that that remove, yeah, removes these places. Um, it will remove it will remove the data. Um, so if you've got if you've got information about the participants and you've selected yes in here, remove their information after you've uploaded it. Um, but it will remove those three places from the mobility group. So it's dependent on your situation in terms of um, uh, have you have you confirmed that the numbers will now be reduced or will those will those participants be replaced by other people maybe um, mm -hmm. if if they'll be replaced, then potentially you would just um, delete those people out and um, you could, for example, do a partial payment request for, um, you know, say, say these ones. Um, and then if you find out, OK, now I know these three uh, participants are going, add those details in and do a partial payment request later for, for just those three. Um, so yeah, kind of depends on the situation, but um, yeah, the, in terms of using this column, um, it's just when you've reduced the number of, of participants in the mobility group, um, the number of places in the mobility group. That makes sense. Thank you, Chris. Um, so moving on to dates. Um, so uh, if you receive uh, an error saying your date uh, your date fields must be in the correct uh, range and format. Um, so this shows because the portal has identified that one or more dates, um, so date of birth, mobility start date or mobility end dates uh, are not in the correct range or format. Um, now, again, with, with copy and pasting, this is usually caused by copying um, sort of invalid dates from, say, another spreadsheet um, to to your change request uh, participant spreadsheet. Um, so, date of births uh, have a valid range of between 1920 to 2020. Um, so, if you were to 
copy and paste the date of birth outside of that range into the spreadsheet um, and then try and upload it, uh, it, it would return an error. Um, so first check is to make sure that all date of births are within that range. Um, second check is your mobility start and end dates, and they need to be within the academic or scheme year. So 1st of September 2022 to 31st of August uh, 2023. Um, so I've seen some cases uh, with um, uh, grant recipients trying to uh, enter, for example, the 1st of September 2023, uh, which is outside of those. Um, and again, yeah, if you if you were if you enter them manually into the spreadsheet, um, it will run that validation and um, advise you that it's outside that range. Um, if you copy and paste, um, do just copy and paste uh, with values only um, to avoid any uh, potential formatting issues with, with copying dates from other sources. Um, but yeah, you can also do that sort of, yeah, double clicking into the cell, uh, hitting enter um, to run that validation on the dates to make sure um, the spreadsheet is happy with them. Um, but if you still, uh, if you've done those checks and you're still having issues, um, again, uh, feel free to send that over to us um, and, and we can uh, do some more advanced checks um, to help you find where that um, invalid date is. Um, and I'll just switch over to our spreadsheet to demonstrate some of that. Just view my changes first. Um, so I've got a spreadsheet here to show you an example of copying and pasting from uh, another spreadsheet. So if I was to, if I type in uh, a mobility start date of um, the 1st of, um, of September 2024, it's going to give me uh, an error because it's outside of the scheme um, year. Um, however, I can copy and paste uh, a date. So if I was to uh, type in here the 1st of September 2023, and paste that in, it's the spreadsheet will allow me to do that, but according to the the program rules and um, that's an invalid date and so when i try to upload this um it will give me an error and let me just see if i can demonstrate that um so if i switch to the just start from the dashboard um so i'm in the project reporting tool here i'm going into your application and down to my change request that you can see i've got in draft um, so I've already downloaded the spreadsheet and it's now asking me to upload it with my changes. You can see I get the error uh, with dates, so date fields must be in the correct range of format. Um, now that double clicking tip that I mentioned earlier, so if I double click and enter, uh, I'll get that error. Um, so I can now, now I know that's the issue, uh, I can change that to a valid date and it will accept that uh, and if i save and re-upload that file it now accepts it um, so that's some tips there on how to correct the dates um, and just one other thing to mention with dates as well is that um, uh, if you've got participants uh, that that are going on multiple mobility groups um, just need to make sure that their mobility uh, start and end dates uh, don't overlap um, and that's something that the uh, after you've submitted uh, the sort of the change request and the payment request um, they'll be checked by the uh, by the operations team uh, to make sure that they don't overlap um, if we go back to our slides Um, oh yeah, one other thing I just wanted to show was uh, an invalid date format. So, um, for, 
for example, here I've got a date with dots in the middle. Um, and actually, Excel doesn't consider this. Uh, if we look at our we look at our format drop down, um, it, it hasn't it doesn't think realize this is the date. So if I copy and paste that in, um, yeah, the, the, um, it, it's not considered a, a date and it won't change it. Um, to a valid date. So um, so yeah, when, when copy and pasting from other sources, um, and I think even in this case, if we paste it values only um, again. So um, yeah, best, uh, oh yeah, and in terms of um, uh, the format that dates need to be in, so uh, it's it's obviously um, date and then month and then year uh, with slashes um, and it will once you sort of um, click into it and press enter it will change the format to um, to this format and that's just to make it a bit more readable um, but uh, you can see up here um, that it's still got that um, the date in with slashes stored in that cell but it's just displaying it um like so so that's um that's expected behavior um i think there was one of a demonstration actually oh yeah that's on the next slide um so similar similarly with costs uh, actual costs so um if you enter a uh, again, usually by copy and pasting. Um, if you've copied from uh, another spreadsheet um, with a different format, that can cause issues. So try to use um, the the paste only, uh, the values only option where possible. Um, but yeah, th this will this error will show if one or more of the costs aren't in the correct format. So to fix this, um, all costs need to contain numbers only, uh, or with a decimal point in the middle if needed. Um, and once you type that number in and press enter, it will format it to a currency field. So it'll put the pound sign in for you automatically. Um, so that's a common one where you might have copied from somewhere else sort of with the pound symbol. Um, and when you paste it in, which I'll show you in a second, um, Excel doesn't consider that as a uh, as a as a currency field, so it doesn't come through to us correctly, and therefore you get an error. And so I'll show you how to avoid that. Um, and you can use Control F as well in that case to find those pound symbols um, and remove them. So if we bring up our spreadsheet here, and I've got an example here of. And some cells which uh, have typed in uh, sort of 100 pounds, and the format may be set to something like text, uh, or general. Um, and when you paste in, you can see up here that pound symbol um, is, is sort of stored in the cell, um, but in some cases, when you sort of click into the cell, hit enter, it will correct it. So you can see it's just changed to uh, the number 100, um, but these ones would be invalid. So um, I can fix those by just doing that quickly. Uh, but yeah, and that, oh yeah, and if you've got a long list of them, so maybe you can't tell which one's um, got an invalid format, um, again, using control F, we search for a pound symbol and do find, um, and that will show you any cell um, with a pound symbol in it, as opposed to these ones which just have the monetary value in it, um, but it, Excel's formatted it to appear as a currency. So,
completing your mobility group. So when you're doing the change request um, and you've made changes to one or more of your mobility groups, um, but um, it, you could get an error saying, please complete your, all your mobility groups. Um, and this can show for a couple of reasons. So reason number one is that one or more fields haven't been entered. Um, so that could be caused by uh, a change you've made to your mobility group uh, that has uh, triggered more fields to, to display um, that you haven't then entered. So for example, if you've changed your mobility group to say, um, uh, yes, I would like um, travel costs uh, for this mobility group now, um, it, it would then trigger a question to display how much uh, how much travel costs. Um, but if you've then not entered that um, and gone back and, and saved, um, there's essentially a missing field there. So um, that's reason number one is, uh, and to fix that, just go into your mobility groups that you've uh, edited. So you can see um, any which have a draft status, um, go into those and just double check. Um, if that's not the reason, the second reason it shows up is because you haven't saved the mobility group. Um, and so that that's just fixed by going into each of the mobility groups in the draft status and just making sure you click on the green save and continue button. Uh, and once they're saved and once all the um, any missing fields have been entered, um, you'll then be able to mark your mobility group groups as complete. Um, so that's all the tips for change requests and participant uh, uploads. Um, so next I'll move on to frequently raised queries uh, relating to payment requests. Um, before I move on, uh, Delaney, is there any, any questions in the Q&A that should be raised? Um, we have got um not specifically, Chris, around um, what you've just gone through on change request, um, but we have got quite a bit of feedback that we're capturing um, that's in the chat at the moment, Chris, so I'll apologise for the barking dog. Um, she's not crying, she's barking, unfortunately. Um, so I'll let you continue, Chris, and go back on to mute. Sure, thanks. Um, so payment requests, so uh, uh, participant information that's required for payments. Um, so before we move on to the sort of the potential error messages that can show um, and how to resolve those, um, a few points to, to make sure that are, are understood with payment requests. And number one is that to request a full payment for a point of expenditure month, all participant information needs to be completed for that point of expenditure month. Um, so we do get um, queries coming through asking uh, sort of why am I why am I not able to request for this month? Um, and, and similarly with partial payment requests uh, for a point of expenditure month, um, you need at least one participant that needs to be completed for that month to be able to request payment. Um, and what we mean by completed participants is that all columns in the spreadsheet have been entered, apart from a few optional columns that are optional. Um, and that are that's the cost fields um, and sending or receiving address line to. Everything else um, is mandatory um, and uh, is is required by the by the program by the scheme. Um, that all of, all of the participant information needs to be entered before you can request a payment. Um, so with that in mind, um, so yeah, the, the process is to uh, submit your participant list. So if, if you come across any er errors that we're about to see, um, where um, where you have missing information, um, you just need to cancel out of the payment request, um, go to upload participant list um, and Download the spreadsheet, find the miss, find the missing cells um, that haven't been entered, add that information, and upload the spreadsheet. Um, and if you're just uploading participants, that 
as mentioned before, that will be automatically approved by the system. So there's no waiting time um, there. And then you can go straight back to your payment request and uh, submit that. Um, so the, the first error you may have come across is uh, advisors you cannot select, say for example, March, um, until you have submitted the full information for at least one participant. So this shows because the port's identified that you haven't completed and uploaded at least one participant. Um, and as mentioned, you can only request payment for participants who you know are going on the mobility group. So to fix this, um, you need to first identify all of the mobility groups for the selected point of expenditure. Um, now, point, um, we'll look at this in a bit more detail on the next slide, but uh, when you're requesting payment, it's not the mobility group start month that you're requesting, it's the point of expenditure month. Um, and that's a month that's um, linked to the, or the start months, um, which yeah, I, I'll, I'll get into detail on, on the next slide. Um, but yeah, um, when, when you're requesting payment, it's, it's by the point of expenditure month. Um, and yeah, as mentioned, to fix this, um, you need to start a change request by selecting um, update mobility groups and upload participants. Uh, and then you get a question, what do you want to update? And you select participants only. Um, open up the spreadsheet and complete those missing cells. And then when you upload the spreadsheet, that will be automatically approved. And then you can submit the payment again. Um, and when you when you come to this, if all of the participants for, for example, in the screenshot on the right, March mobility groups, point of expenditure, if they're now all complete, this error won't show. Um, so how do I know which participants are for each point of expenditure month? So to find this out, you can open your approved project plan um, and that's accessible through the uh, your application. It's on from the dashboard. If you go to your application and then approve project plan, you'll see a screen like this. And this lists out all of your mobility group start months on the left hand side um, and then uh, one column, if I just zoom in here, uh, is the organisation to be paid in, and that's your point of expenditure month. So we can see here I've got one mobility group starting in April, and the point of expenditure month is March. So when I'm requesting payment and I select March, um, it's requesting, I'll be requesting payment for this one mobility group starting in April. Um, but the, uh, if you've got a lot of mobility groups, um, depending on the point of expenditure months you've selected, they can sit across multiple start months. So if May, for example, um, if I just requested that for the May mobility groups, I want to be um, receive payment in March, that could also be March. And so, so looking down this list, um, if, if there was two here that said March, for example, uh, adding up these mobility groups, um, you, you know that these are the ones that you need to make sure um, have participants that are fully completed. Um, and then to find out those mobility groups in those start months, um, you can go into your approved project, uh, sorry, approved budget summary. Um, and when you're in your budget summary, um, there's a button here that says either change to accumulated view or change to individual view. Um, and when you change to individual view, you'll see um, your mobility groups laid out like this. Um, so the title uh, will be the start month and then it will list out each mobility group um, showing various details about them. So I can identify there that in, in my case, uh, a fairly simple one, I've only got one mobility group starting in April. So I need to make sure that all the participants, assuming I want to request a full payment, all 15 participants need to be fully completed in the spreadsheet and uploaded in order to request a full payment for, um, for April start month or March um, point of expenditure. Um, if you've got past that question, so say you've uh, selected March, um, it then asks you, uh, would you like to request a full payment or a partial payment? 
And if you try to select full payment, but again, you haven't uploaded all the participants, um, you'll receive this error on the right hand side. Um, so similar process. Um, uh, yeah, so this shows if, if all of those haven't been completed. Um, so you've got two options here. Um, number one is to fill out all the participants for that point of expenditure month. Alternatively, if, for example, you don't you don't have the participant information for some of them, um, then you would need to request, uh, assuming you need to make the request now, um, you can either wait or you can request a partial payment. Um, and when you do a partial payment, you'll uh, receive, uh, it will ask you to download the spreadsheet and it will show you all the participants that um, uh, for that point of expenditure month, and you can select yes alongside the ones you want to request for payment. Um, so yeah, just to reiterate, to fix this, um, you need to identify all your mobility groups for the selected POE, start that change request, um, submit those changes, um, and uh, attempt the payment request again. Um, so that's it in terms of uh, the common queries um, that are that have uh, been raised around change requests, uh, participant uploads uh, and payment requests. Um, as I mentioned um, on the YouTube videos, I go into more detail around these um, different tips on how to use the spreadsheet. Um, and yeah, a few more um, sort of error messages that you can get um, that we haven't covered here. Um, Delaney thanks. Emma. Thanks Chris, um, that was really really useful. Um, we've had a, a lot of uh, questions and queries that I've tried to respond to the ones that are specifically about what we're talking about today but obviously there's some other ones in there that we'll have to collate. What, we, what we'll do, we'll collate those under certain themes and um, we'll get back to people about those ones as well. Thank you for that. Um, some of them in there are very specific. So if you've got a specific query, we've got on the screen here now, um, if you do need to get in touch, please use the contact us page in the portal. And I've just realized that I'm not camera. Here I am, sorry, oh, I'm not here. There I am, sorry. <laughs> um, and you can also email us at the Turing-scheme at capita.com. Um, again, as Delaney and Chris mentioned earlier, this will be put up on our YouTube channel so you can watch along again uh, if you had any, if you missed anything along the way. Um, I don't think, was there anything else from anybody else, Delaney? I think Delaney's dealing with a barking dog. Um, so uh, at this stage, I think just it'd be uh, thank you for attending today and uh, thank you for your feedback. Thank you very much. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll we'll be looking for all the questions raised on on the Q and A um, after this call. So um, yeah, th uh, thank you for for all your comments. Um, and we will um, yeah, if if there's anything to get in touch with us, um, please do that through the um, through the channels as mentioned. Um, but yeah, uh, any feedback that's uh, been raised on on the Q and A will um, definitely be taking that on board um, for. Uh, any future improvements uh, or, or changes.